Hi, I'm Dr. Caroline Leaf and welcome to my podcast show. Today we're going to be talking about a really serious topic and that is suicide. How to help yourself and help others find healing. We really do have a problem. More and more people are choosing to take their own lives. More and more people see are seeing death as a solution to the difficulties that they face. Just recently, as we, as we know, Kate Spade and Anthony Bourdain, very high-profile high profile people, they committed suicide and it's de- devastated the world. Yet every 40 seconds, someone commits suicide. Every 40 seconds, someone's world is devastated. We have a problem, and I say we, because the rising rates of suicide are actually a judgment on our society. I just want to read something to you from David Foster Wallace, who discusses suicide, and he said, The so-called psychotically depressed person who tries to kill herself doesn't do so out of hopelessness or any abstract conviction that life's assets and debits do not square, and surely not because death seems suddenly appealing. The person in whom it is invisible, agony, reaches a certain unendurable level will kill herself the same way a trapped person will eventually jump from the window of a burning high-rise. Make no mistake about people who leap from burning windows. Their terror of falling from a great height is still just as great as it would be for you or me standing speculatively at the same window just checking out the view. The fear of falling remains a constant. The variable here is the other terror, the fire's flames. When the flames get close enough, falling to death becomes the slightly less terrible of the two terrors. It's not desiring the fall, it's the terror of the flames. And yet nobody down on the sidewalk looking up and yelling don't and hang on can understand the jump. Not really. You'd have to have personally been trapped and felt flames to really understand a terror way beyond falling. That's really profound. It's the flames that we don't understand, those flames that are seem worse than jumping off that building. And those flames are different for everyone. I mean, we're all going through stuff. Life's full of challenges. I've had so many people send in in emails to me about how they were so close to committing suicide, killing themselves, maybe even killing their family because they were just facing such profound crises in their life that the pain was just too much to be able to even think about going on. I've even had mothers telling me how they were planning mass suicide including, of their children, including themselves, because their husbands had been, had been having affairs and they just couldn't see a way forward. I've had emails of people just in such conflict because they feel that they're one way, but society tells them that they need to be another way. People that are just so broken by loneliness. You know, more people die annually from loneliness than any other disease known to mankind. People for all kinds of reasons, we can't understand the reasons and we cannot judge them either. What's very important here is that we look at ourselves as as a society, because if suicides are on the rise, then we need to see what's wrong with society. We need to ask ourselves, are we operating in the way that we're supposed to operate operate as humans? You know, one of the most profound things for me in the science of quantum physics is the law of entanglement. And the law of entanglement shows that particles are always related, no matter what. It's the law of relationship. So let me link that back to why I feel that it's profoundly important when it comes to suicide and any traumatic issue for that matter. Well, we as humans are designed to connect with each other. We're designed to be entangled in each other's lives. The law of relationship in quantum physics shows that once something's in relationship, it cannot be separated. And once we, and when you try and break that separation, it causes all kinds of damage. And that's what happens in societies. When we've become so individualistic that we've got stuck on our cell phones and stuck in our lives and stuck in our homes, that we're not reaching out and recognizing the pain that's going on around us, maybe even in your own home, not recognizing the pain in your own home. Who knows? We, we have these certain norms that we think are okay to live by, and we, and we miss things. We need to be tuning into each other. You know, I'm a mother of four, and one of the things that I pray every single day is that I would be able to tune into my children, tune into my husband, tune into their needs on a physical, emotional, and spiritual level. And it's really a desire of my heart to be able to tune in and hear them. As a therapist for 25 years, that's something I would do as well. Every patient that came through my hands, I had a responsibility to really listen to what their story was. 
And as a society, we are kind of disentangling each other from ourselves. We're so connected that we're disconnected. And this is causing a profound sense of loneliness. People feel that they have to be coping with things that they can't cope with just because they're supposed to be doing that because of maybe the church they go to, maybe the work environment that they've set or the expectations in their marriage or their life or they've done really well at school for years so everyone just expects them to just be perfect and do things so well. We place expectations on each other that may maybe make us act in ways that we shouldn't be acting or hide the pain that we shouldn't be hiding. Because what we've gone through is real. What we need to understand, what we experience in our life, the challenges that we experience in our life, these are very real. And they, they, we process them through our mind and we build them into our brain. So if someone is contemplating suicide, this is not something that just happened overnight because of just one incident. For someone to actually say something or to do something, you have to have actually thought about that for at least 63 days in order for it to, to gain sufficient energy for you to be able to speak about that. And that goes for everything, not just the trauma. That's just the way that the human brain is, is wired and how the human brain functions. Whatever we say and whatever we do, every moment of every day, whatever comes out of our head is something that we have thought about for a period of time. So someone who contemplates or does commit suicide hasn't just thought that way for five minutes. That has been something that's been going on in their head for hours, years, months, weeks, who knows how long. Maybe there's been suicidal thoughts going on. Maybe there's been previous attempts. The point is that if we are entangled like we should be as humans, if we are operating not as individuals but as communities that care, that tune into each other, that are more, that are not just totally self-involved but that are reaching out to others in love, when we operate in our wired for love design, then we will hear each other's pain. We'll see each other's pain. It begins with ourselves taking stock of our own lives, taking stock to see are we being honest with ourselves? Are we talking about our pain? Are we facing our pain? Are we trying to suppress our own pain? Do we have someone that we can talk to? Has society become such that we don't have, maybe in our own family, do we not have environments where we feel that we can go to to be safe? Are churches and places and community centers and these places not providing sufficient, play, sufficient people or environments where we can actually go and, and, and talk and just talk and, and in, a, in a non-judgmental environment where people will just listen to us? Very often it just takes someone to say, hey, it's okay, you know, this is tough what you're going through, we're here for you, you don't have to try and prove yourself or whatever it may be, who knows what those words are. Sometimes you don't even need words. Sometimes. People just need to know that someone is recognizing their pain and that they're not alone in that pain and that it's okay to not constantly cope all the time. We're wired for love. We cannot survive without love. On a quantum physics level, we know we actually can see from research that we are designed and made in love. We literally are waves of love. We're immersed in love. According to research, the top addiction is love, which means that we're designed to be consumed by love. Addiction actually means consumed by. So if we are designed to be consumed by love, and love is not just in a loving relationship, love is in how life functions. It's in, it's in all relationships, in relationships with your work colleagues, your friends, your children, your husbands, your wives. It is immersed in a society where we are trusting each other, accepting each other, where we feel like if we don't always have to be be doing everything well and when we're having a bad day that we can actually say that without feeling guilt or condemnation because of religious laws or because of societal norms or things like that, that we can say, hey, I'm battling today. And then someone will listen because research shows that by the process of tuning into others and being able to share just in a non-judgmental way with others, you activate love in that person's life and you activate love in your own life. And because love is such a normal functioning, your body responds. And your brain responds. And all kinds of chemicals will flow through your brain and your body that will enable you to be able to function at a much higher level. You will have resilience flowing in you as the listener and as the person speaking that will activate genetic expression to enable you to be stronger and to face those issues and to start the process of talking through those issues and dealing with those issues. And so now let's talk about the current health, mental health care system which is not helping people. The very system that's supposed to be helping people suffering 
is in shambles. Psychotropic drugs have failed to eradicate mental ill health. More people suffer from mental ill health than before. Kate Spade, she saw some of the best mental health professionals in New, in New York for months. So it's not a matter of going to psychiatrists, getting a label and getting a drug. This is not the solution. What we need to listen to is to listen to people's stories. So what can you do? Let's just say that you are that person who is feeling suicidal and you've considered it and you've been thinking about it. Maybe you've even been attempted suicide. First of all, I want you to just reach out to you in love and I may not know you directly and personally, but I do care. I care deeply for humanity and I do care deeply for you as a person or persons. If it's a few, if there's more than one of you, I care for you and I want to tell you that there's other people out there that care for you as well, that there are people that will listen to you. My advice to you if you're feeling like this is please find someone, someone to talk to. Don't be scared to tell people how you feel. Just tell people that you need someone to listen. Find a friend, find someone that you can talk to and talk. Talk as much as you need talk. Go to a church, go to a local a community center, go to the local church, find someone that you can talk to. Personally, what I have for you are some of my resources like my 21-day brain detox which is based on the techniques I developed for my patients for many years. It's had a lot of, it's had, we've had so many hundreds of thousands of people using this system. I use this system. It's an exact, incredibly powerful way of you using your mind to kind of organize your mind and then getting your brain to change its structure. The big thing is that when our brain, when we think and go through stuff in life, when we off, in those flames and we just feel like we can't go on and our hopelessness goes, we almost have to be able to stand back and stand outside of ourselves. We almost have to separate ourselves from ourselves. And what I used to tell my patients is, imagine that you've got all this pain and all these issues in a building and you are standing outside that building and you're not alone. You're immersed in love. If you're spiritual and you believe in God, imagine that you're standing in the arms of God. You don't believe in God, I'm sure you believe in love. Imagine that you're standing in the arms of love. You are not alone. And that issue is inside the building. And as big and as scary as it is, those flames, they are contained within that building. And then you, with that in mind, you kind of almost objectify the situation. And then if you work through something like my 21 Day Brain Detox, it's five steps every day that you do over a period of time, over cycles of 21 days, very well explained in, the on, in my 21 Day Brain Detox online program and also in my book, Switch on Your Brain, you can then understand how to start getting those thoughts under control, starting to build hope back in your life again. And if you're doing this with someone, so much better. If you know someone who's battling with these suicidal thoughts, who knows at risk for suicide, the exact same things apply. You reach out to them and you help them. You go and tell them, listen, I'm here for you. What's your story? How can I listen to you? How can I help you? You don't have to give tons of advice. You can, it's just listening and loving them and hugging them. And, and it may take a lot of time. Get more people involved. Set up a, a network of people surrounding this person who's battling. And don't let them be alone. Maybe they'll phone you. Maybe you need to keep them on the phone for hours while you get over to their house or something. But as you give and help, you are increasing your own healing by a factor of 60%. We're designed to help each other. And when we do, major changes happen. And once we start doing this as individuals, we can start changing this within a society. If you're part of a church group, if you're a counselor, if you're part of a community outreach, we can help you. We've got all these materials and resources to help you to help other people. I encourage you to pull on that love that is naturally inside of you. You don't have to have a PhD to be able to help someone. All you have to do is reach out and love. Tune into others and you can really help them. If we stand up for each other, if we start loving each other, we will release love into the environment and we will release love into each other and we'll be able to help each other to get through these very, very, very tough issues and help people deal with the flames that are drawing them into suicidal thoughts and suicide. We can change this together. Thank you for listening to me today. I'm Dr. Caroline Leaf.